So let's get into it. Relationship saving tip number one, you've got to get on the same page. So let's pretend you and your partner are deciding that you're going to go on vacation. Let's go on vacation. Well, this is a vacation. Fun day in the snow, maybe you break a leg, that's awesome. <laughs> and so is this, right? So <laughs> one vote for the beach. And even if you agree on the same kind of vacation, let's say you're, oh yeah, we're totally on the same page, we're gonna go camping, right? Well, did you mean this? Or this? <laughs> I know, glamping, that's a thing, and I need to do that, I haven't done that yet. So do you know whether on going on vacation or in your remodel, do you know where you are headed? And are you making assumptions about where you think the other person is headed? More importantly, do you know why you're headed there? Do you know what your goal is in making this huge, expensive, stressful change to your space? You have to ask some pretty important questions. What are those important questions you say? Why do we want to change this room? Okay, not just, oh, it would be prettier, or because HGTV told me to, right? But really, why are you wanting to change the space? What's bugging you about it? How do we need the space to function, right? Because people ask me things like, hey, I was just wondering, do you think I should put a lamp in this corner? And I go, well, what do you use the corner for, right? If it's for yoga, a lamp would be kind of stupid. If it's for reading, a lamp would be really smart. So you have to understand, how do you need the space to function? And usually a room, especially in Seattle with our smaller spaces, we have multi-purpose, multi-function rooms. So we need several functions to come out of a space. And you better have a real good bullet point list of all those functions so that you can make sure they're all taken care of by the end result of the design. Can't just be pretty, that's not enough. Finally, what will those changes do for me, for us, for our family? So what is the, not just the function of the space, but how is your family going to function differently as a result? Because, for example, if you take a living room that is completely focused on the TV and all of the furniture is facing the TV, that's a TV room. That's not a conversation room. And if you're wanting to play games or have more conversations as a family, how you arrange the furniture so that it's not just a theater facing a TV is really going to affect how people behave in that space. So, why do you want to change this room? I've asked my clients these questions, and these are some of the kinds of answers that I've gotten back. It's embarrassing, and I want to have friends come over. It feels cold and uninviting, so we never use it. I work too hard to have a space that looks like I am still in college. <laughs> we have no place to sit. Sometimes the answers are very, very practical. <laughs> And finally, it reminds me of his ex-wife. And I get that one not infrequently. And this comes up when people are trying to move into somebody else's space. Um, either there's the ghost of the ex that still lives there, you know, that person chose all the paint colors and all the furniture, and the person who's still living there goes, well, it works fine. Well, it doesn't work fine if the energy is still there and if it's bugging the person that you've invited into your home. And also, the person who's moving into your home is kind of camping out in your space until they're able to make their mark on that space. And so it is important, even though you think it's totally working great, that you figure out a way to make it our space instead of my space where you happen to be staying. 